prophesy to you go forward go forward go forward go forward I release you 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 Sydney Granville Elton was one of the longest serving expatriate missionaries to Nigeria from 1937 until his death in 1987 and never for once leaving the country in his final 27 years. He came to Nigeria as a denominational missionary sent by the Apostolic Church of the United Kingdom. Pa Elton, as he was fondly called, was a man who wanted Nigerians to seek and understand the will of God for themselves as well as for Nigeria as a whole. No single individual occupies a large place in the history of the Pentecostal and charismatic movement in Nigeria as Pa Elton. He constantly urged Nigerian evangelists and missionaries forward as he often backed up his message with heavy quantities of books, tracts and other aids including money. Pa Elton's decision to become a missionary to Nigeria did not come like a flash in the pan. He and his wife, Hannah, realized that they shared a common calling of being missionaries. Then they began to pray and give serious consideration to being missionaries to Africa. Not long after, at a meeting in their church, the Apostolic Church, a prophecy came confirming that Pa Elton was called to be a missionary to Africa. A subsequent prophecy at the General Council of the Church was even more precise. It mentioned Elisha as the location where the couple was to serve as missionaries in Nigeria. Pa Elton arrived at Elisha at the heat of a revival. At the center of the revival was Joseph Babalola. Well, he was called to be a missionary personally in the Apostolic Church. And then the prophet called him to come to Elisha. And that was in 1937. Joseph Babalola was in Elisha. The revival was still going on. So he came to Elisha and to Okioye. And there he was. There he started the work. The revival was going on and there were many miracles and all that, but little Bible teaching. So he took on the Bible teaching as the important part of his work. And he continued in that till he became the superintendent of the Apostolic Church work in Elisha area, which included Ekiti and all that, uh, that area there. In 1953, he resigned his missionary appointment and threw himself into non-denominational ministry. He gradually became the prophetic voice upon whom many scores of young Nigerians leaned for advice and inspiration. Well, he was in the Apostolic Church, working as an apostolic missionary. Then revival came in 1952, the Lateran revival from from America. So he resigned from the Apostolic Church and became independent. That's how he got in touch with so many other missionaries and pastors. And he became World Christian Crusade. That was the word, the name he used. And we got other missionaries in from America. And the main work was to go around having conducting revival, interdenominational revival in many parts of Nigeria. That's what he went on doing. Then he settled down to training evangelists and sending them out. To list those heavily impacted by the personal counsel of Pa Elton during the 20-year period from the mid-1960s to the mid-1980s would constitute a veritable who's who among older leaders in today's Nigerian Pentecostal movement. The late Archbishop Benson Idahosa, Pastor E.A. E. Adeboye, and Bishop Francis Waleoke were perhaps near the top of the list of those most profoundly impacted by Pa Elton. Pa 
Pass Sydney Elton was strategically positioned geographically in Elisha in western Nigeria with easy access to the centers of revival that opened up in the 1960s in Ibado and Ife. He traveled incessantly almost to the end of his life, including scores of foray into eastern Nigeria and northern Nigeria. He gradually positioned himself as the largest supplier of tracts, books, and other literature promoting the Pentecostal message. Pastor S.G. Elton exercised apostolic and prophetic oversight over the youths in Nigeria. When the federal government announced the National Youth Service Corps NYSC program as a compulsory one-year service for all fresh graduates in states other than their own places of origin, many university students fought and kicked against it. But with the prophetic insight, Elton explained to the Christian community, especially to the university undergraduates, that the NYSC program was God's way of using Christian graduates to spread the gospel to all nooks and crannies of Nigeria. This later proved to be so. At times when Pa is teaching, uh, you, will, you will be prophesying, but you won't know that it was a prophecy. Later we realized it was a prophecy. He is the one who told us already about the coppers. He said a time is coming in Nigeria why government will be paying the young ones to preach the gospel. And later then the coppers came and the Christian coppers came up and has done a lot of work in the work of mission. Pa Elton distributed books and audio tapes containing teachings by such men as Gordon Lindsay, T.L. Osborne and Oral Roberts. He was very instrumental to the visits of Gordon Lindsay and T.L. Osborne to Nigeria. T.L. Osborne held very successful crusades in places like Ibadan in 1957, Inugun and Benin in the early 1970s. He was in touch with T.L. Osborne who was interested in the unreached areas and he trained, my father trained evangelists to go to unreached areas in Nigeria. Now Baetin was a man of who has interest in the move of God. I could remember in 1974 when T.L. Osborne came to Nigeria, he made us to be involved in that crusade together with the uh, Archbishop Idauza of Benin. Pa has taught us a lot. A lot of people always come to him for counseling. Many Christians who have become famous today in the works of the Lord. He always comes to him for counseling. I could remember Idauza always comes to him for counseling and he always goes to Benin. He always goes to Onicha. He always goes to Kaduna, Kano, in the, even in the universities in the southwest then. Pa was always there and he came across a lot of those who are being in the forefront of the gospel today. In the, Pentico, uh, in the Pentecost move of Nigeria, Pa Elton cannot be overemphasized. He has done a lot of things concerning the, even is the one who opened our eyes to the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit and the move of the Holy Spirit. He has a lot of teaching us and God has used him tremendously. After 50 years of a remarkable missionary work in Nigeria, Pa Elton passed on in 1987 and was buried in the city of Elisha alongside his wife, Hannah. One of the legacies Pastor and Mrs. S.G. Elton bequeathed to the church in Nigeria is their daughter, Ruth Elton. Ruth arrived in Nigeria with her parents in 1937 at the tender age of three and has remained in Nigeria ever since then, herself becoming a missionary. came to Nigeria in 1937 when I was not up to three years old and uh, came with my parents who were missionaries. So I have been in Nigeria most of the time since. I am now a Nigerian. I have Nigerian citizenship. So I have been a missionary for over 50 years and now I am sort of retired to Elisha, having been in Kogi State for most of the time. The life and work of Pa Sidney Elton 
has indeed left a formative and indelible mark on Nigerian Pentecostalism. If ever any human vessel could be given the credit of mentoring the charismatic revival and movement, it was he. Today, Wafbeck honors a man whose passion and work continues to impact the lives of many. Today, we honor Sidney Granville Elton.